Hi Alex, we are just outside the police cordon near the Al Noor Mosque, just metres from where 42 people lost their lives, 42 of the 50 people killed last Friday. Now among the terror and horror of those massacres, we are hearing good news stories, they are emerging, stories of hope and courage and stories of worshippers sacrificing their lives for others inside the mosque and stories of ordinary Cantabrians and passers-by who stopped to help people out. Now one of those people is Nigel Gardner. Just after 1.30 on Friday afternoon, he left work early because he was simply taking his car to the mechanics. He drove along Dean's Ave. He was standing at the outside the driveway, um, shooting them as they were running down the street. Trying to get away from him? Yeah, yeah. Um, all the people who I saw shot were all shot in the back as they tried to run. That must have been absolutely horrifying to witness that. Uh, seconds into it and the adrenaline was sort of through the roof, so it was just, you know, try to help. Could you hear, do you remember what you heard, Nigel? Very little. Um, there was not a lot of noise um, apart from the gun. Um, there wasn't anyone, any really screaming or crying. Um, no, it was really, really quiet. Do you remember how he was dressed? Do you remember how he looked? Vaguely. Um, he looked at me um, when I was walking towards him briefly. Um, I saw some people had fallen down by cars, so I went to check on them. And, um, yeah, no, he looked at me. I was sort of a bit... Um, I guess I was focusing more on the gun. Didn't get a... you know didn't really look at him too much. So you're out of your car at this point. So take us back. You're driving along. You see this guy and you register. This is a gun incident. Yep. What did you do? I uh, stopped my car, um, put my hazards on because I knew there were cars behind me. So I thought with the gunfire, I didn't want the cars trying to get past me and into, you know, into the line of fire. Uh, grabbed my phone as I got out of the car and called 111 and um, ran over to people who were lying on the ground. You ran over to them? Yeah. You ran towards trouble, basically? Well, yeah. I d what didn't... made you do that, do you think, Nigel? Uh, I sort of sussed that they'd been shot, so I sort of, I don't know, I didn't think about a lot at the time. I just wanted to see if they were OK. It was just your instinct to go to I them? I guess, yeah. And what was that like? Uh, adrenaline. Um, wasn't feeling much, wasn't really thinking too much. Um, just trying to get on to 111. Um, I knew the police would have to clear the scene first with the guy shooting, and I knew we needed ambulances there really quickly afterwards. And were there other drivers who got out of their cars yeah, too, Nigel? Yeah, what was there going was... on? And um, what were you doing when you would go up to people? Uh, I checked on the lady in the car behind me because I didn't have anything on me to put pressure on any of the wounds. I was hoping someone in one of the cars behind me had something and I, a uh, guy two cars behind me actually had a first aid kit. So um, he grabbed that and um, yeah, we went around with um, pressure bandages and just tried to stop the bleeding and yeah. Do you know how many people were injured? Uh, one, two, three, half a dozen, maybe more. And this was just on the footpath This out. was just on the footpath um, on the Morehouse Ave side of the mosque. And so this is obviously before the police came. You rung yep. 111 and other people did as well. Yep. Then what started to happen? Um, not a lot. I mean, for us there, um, not a lot. The gunman had stopped and we couldn't see him anymore. So it became more of um, sort of drag one guy from the footpath to behind the parked car just to get him, you know, in case he'd come back. You wanted some cover? Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, we were just running around trying to... Um, one of the victims, one of the girls who was shot was five years old. Um, she'd been shot in the back. Um, and there was another man who had been shot quite high up in the back and we knew he was not doing well. He needed, you know, medical attention real fast. Um, so we just tried to hold on to them until 
till the ambulance could arrive. Any victim is a terrible thing, but to see a child, Nigel, that must have been incredibly was, tough. You know, I, poor girl, you know, five years old, and she never, like, never made a sound. Um, she just sort of passed pain at that point, I think. Um, her dad was there too. He had been shot as well. Um, so his, his priority, he was trying to get us to take her to, just her, to hospital. He was asking you, take my child? Yeah, yeah. Um, and we couldn't because we didn't have a way, a safe way to transport at the time. God, this must have been so, it must be overwhelming. But now, do you think you're processing it? Have... I, I've been really lucky. I've got a lot of good friends and family who have been helping me um, for the fa past few days. So I've managed to talk about it. Um, and, yeah, no, the support from my friends and family have been awesome, which has helped a lot. So you were running around with other people. Did yeah. you, do, you, do you know who any of these other people no, are? No, we didn't really have time to swap contact details. No, but that's um, the remarkable thing, isn't it? You were yeah. all just in a line of vehicles and everybody... Yeah, I mean, scrambling. I think... And I saw similar things in the earthquake um, in 2011... I'm um, driving down the street and there were people doing a sausage sizzle on the side of the road for everyone. You know, they were just putting food on, strangers helping strangers. Um, and it was, yeah, the same sort of thing, you know. It's, I guess if you want to look at the positives from tragedies like this is Christchurch has proven again that in times of crisis we come together. Um, you know, saw Mongol mob members and Black Power members hugging and, you know, Everyone's put their stuff aside and we've come together as a city. You've been in Christchurch through the earthquakes? Yeah, yeah. So to have this now, again, a great uh, thing of sadness? Yeah, we've been copying it in Christchurch, I guess. Um, I think, you know, we hear about these things happening in other places in the world. Um, especially something like this, which you'd think would never happen in New Zealand. And for it to happen in Christchurch is a maddening, a disappointing. Um, you know, this happens in other places. It doesn't happen here. Nigel, I first met you a couple of days ago, and it yeah. was outside the memorial at yeah. the Deans Avenue Mosque. So you've been back, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. And what made you go back? It's support, I think. Um, I think the same, like, I was there for an hour or so, and the amount of people who, you know, who walked through and, you know, put flowers down and showed their love and support to our community um, was amazing. It was just nice to be part of it. And I heard you there, you were talking to other people who were also really personally affected, who had injured family members and and the like. Yeah. Did it help to talk to people who had experienced maybe some of what you had on the Friday? Um, yeah, I think everyone who was there and even in the wider community, I think we were all affected by yeah. this in one way or, the, one way or another.